Welcome to another week in the National Hockey League, and welcome to Dirty Data. We're going to start this episode off in Vegas. That's Shane Kelly and Aaron Ward. I'm David Pinota. And gentlemen, let's jump right into these Vegas Golden Knights. They're 1-4 and four in the first five and off to the worst start in their young history. Wardle, what are some of the underlining reasons as to what the heck is going on in Sin City? Well, from the Vegas perspective, uh, from the inception of this organization, they've kind of had a sum of the parts mentality with a four grouping, right? They expected contribu contributions from one through four. And uh, in the last five games, they've gotten 10 goals. And the problems, clearly, is the fact that you're not even in the game from the start. They're getting nothing. I mean, clearly, you got to look at the fact that some key components, uh, Stone, Pacioretty, Yanmark, have only played two games. Tuck's been out for a period of time. Uh, even in the back end, Martinez has only played three games. So production is a difficulty. But 10 goals in, two game, in five games is not sufficient. It might be explained by the fact their power play has uh, basically scored zero to this point. So it's a struggle. For DeBoer, he's got to look down that bench and realize it's not the same team as years past, and they've got to find something, whether it's a change in system or an expectation you got to sh shuffle up the lines and get something different, a little different chemistry, but it's not working for them currently. Yeah, the, the, the advanced stats, you know, are kind of all over the place a little with these guys. I think largely because of the things that Aaron's talking about with people in and out of the lineup, but most numbers seem to suggest this is kind of a league average group, not as bad as they have been. So if you're a Vegas fan, you know, you should see some regression to the mean, we call it, or regression upwards. Like their, their expected goals for is right around 50%. So that means they're not getting dominated. They're also not dominating. Uh, and the other big thing, I think with two thirds their first line being out, especially Stone, who in the analyst community is thought of as one of, you know, the great all around forwards in hockey, the quality of competition that the guys below them now have to play has gone up. And a guy like Chandler Stevenson is really struggling. He's getting killed on possession. He's at like 44% of possession right now. So they need to find something. You're right, Aaron. I just don't know where it's going to come until those guys come back. Well, the question, though, remains, though, if, if you're not scoring goals, you got to keep them out of your net. And when you're giving up an average of four goals against per game, and when you're on the penalty kill, which is an Achilles heel right now, for every penalty, you, four penalties you take, you're giving up one goal of four. So this team, I mean, they got to figure it out. 49 giveaways so far through five games. In fact, in one game, they gave the puck up 18 times. So if if analytics are built around possession, I can't imagine if you're giving the puck away 18 times over the course of the game, you're going to get away with winning that game. That may contribute as to the numbers associated with Robin Leonard's performance so far earlier on in the season. He's got a 904 save percentage, a 321 excuse me, a 328 goals against average. It's not the same Robin Leonard that we're accustomed to, but I assume, guys, it's primarily based on the fact that the other team's got the puck so many other times than they do. Yeah, so as Aaron was talking about, with, with giveaways, they tend to lead to transition opportunities. Transition opportunities, we know, is far more likely to score goals than when you're coming out and the other team has the chance to set up their defensive system in front of you. And Leonard has gone from one of the better high danger save percentage goalies in the league. I think he was sixth or seventh last year. He's fourth worst. So he's not bailing them out and he's facing a lot more high danger scoring chances. And they're also giving up a disproportionate number of those as Aaron talked about. So that combination means he's struggling. Uh, I don't think you would, you would be as worried about this group if he was even performing at a league average level in terms of high danger save percentage. And theoretically, when you start thinking about the transition, right, if the puck gets given away and you're a team that's not scoring goals, and let's be honest, forwards usually err on the side of offense, they're not getting back in defensive position on time. And when things start to go south, people start to cheat. And you can see this in the, in the Vegas uh, game, that they're, they're trying to get that offense going at the cost of the defensive uh, responsibilities. And when your goalie's not there, I mean, it's, you're going to be picking out of the back of your net for the entirety of the 60 minutes. Well, you would think that their primary unit that they've had since their inception of William Carlson, Riley Smith, and Jonathan Marcheseau would be able to contribute, but so far it just hasn't been there. They're certainly going to need them to step up. What about from a defensive aspect here? You know, we're talking so much about the offense and the lack of it and the struggles in, in net with Robin Leonard, but the D hasn't really been up to snub either. Well, as we mentioned, if you look at D and you're looking at the goals against, most oftentimes forwards will look back at the defenseman, blame them, the defenseman will change, blame the forwards. you got a guy in there in Petrangelo who's expected to put up numbers, supposed to be the key to transition, break the puck out, get the puck distributed to the forwards, and when they don't have possession of it or they're picking the puck out of the back of the net, he can't do his job. So in the absence of Martinez, as we mentioned, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure on his shoulders. 
to for him to carry this entire decor. So you're not getting you're not getting that harmony amongst the D and the forwards in terms of offensive production. Yeah, again, I think uh, him and Theodore are two candidates for positive regression. Like their their advanced stats, they're not getting killed on possession. They're both over fifty percent when they're on the ice. Uh, they're not giving up a ton of scoring chances. They're winning the expected goals battle like fifty three or fifty four percent. So this, it's not as if those two are, you know, falling asleep at the wheel or letting the team down. I, I think if when we play the season out a little bit more and Martinez comes back, uh, you'll start to see more success just because the, the bounces are going to go their way. And I know that people hate that idea, but I, I think there's a large dose of luck in here in, in explaining their poor performance. As a paid member of the defensemen's union, I'd say they're a victim of circumstance right now as defensemen. <laughs> <laughs> they need oh, they Aaron Ward a little bit more there. luck in Vegas, that's for sure. Um, yeah, feel free to call them up, Ward. I'll give them a few pointers. Oh, I'm there. there. I'm there. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, let's see what happens with these Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, game six gets underway shortly. That's Aaron Ward and Shane Kelly. I'm Dave Pinota. This is another edition of Dirty Data.